Welcome back, compadres. We're getting into some really cool stuff today. We're getting into specialized decline curve plots. We're going to look at a reciprocal rate radial flow plot. We previously looked at rate time and rate cum decline. All we can get from these plots is estimated element recovery and reserves. We can do th the same thing with the specialized plots, but we can extend it to do some reservoir characterization. And we can use we can do it using actual decline curve data, production data. We don't have to stop the well. And so we can get things like permeability, skin, original gas in place, and drainage area. And these are kind of the bread and butter of what reservoir engineers reservoir engineers want. And so um, today I'm just gonna go through the mechanics of how to actually do an interpretation, set it up get reserves and EUR from actual data. And then in part two, we're gonna to go to make this two videos. In part two, I'm gonna do some reservoir characterization and actually explain some theory behind the equations that we're using. So guys, I hope you're excited. This is some really cool stuff because you can do it with decline curves. And uh, so, Let's go ahead and get started. So in part one, we're going to determine the remaining reserves and estimate ultimately recovery using a reciprocal rate radial flow plot. So this is what the plot looks like. It's going to be different than your rate cum and rate time decline. What you have on the y-axis is reciprocal rate, which is basically the one over rate. It's the inverse of rate. Um, and then you have time on the x-axis. And so what you're doing is you basically have a straight line here that you fit to the beginning of your data. This is the infinite acting region. If you don't know what that is, I'll talk about it here shortly. And then after that, this triangle is signifies the end of infinite acting flow. You got to fit the data with a different equation. In this case, we're gonna use our rate time equations from ARPS to fit this later data and so the significance of this point right here is huge because once you to determine the inf the end of infinite acting flow by this triangle you can determine permeability you can do reservoir characterization so you can determine the, these properties to the right permeability drainage area original gas in place skin and recovery factor everything we ever want as a reservoir engineer and so the key concepts I want you to focus on as we go through this, or the key concepts you need to be familiar with, is flow regimes. So in wells, you have infinite acting radial flow. In this case, we're talking radial flow. You have boundary dominated flow. And so the difference between these two is infinite acting essentially means that the pressure has not reached the boundary yet. And boundary dominated pressure has reached the outer boundary and is slowly declining and so also what we're doing when we do this analysis is we're assuming a constant bottom hole pressure throughout this infinite acting region. And so if you go look at any engineering, petroleum engineering textbook, you can simulate a well one in two ways. And I'm sure there's more complicated analyses yet now, but the simplest case is to assume a constant bottom hole pressure or a constant rate. Because we're using the Klein curve data, constant bottom hole pressure is a good approximate of the infinite acting region. This is because when you produce a well, start producing a well, you're going to choke back production. You're going to have like a bottleneck um, because you have like stuff down the line downstream that, that requires a certain pressure to feed into like gas plants and separators and, and you know everything else. And so it's essentially a bottleneck at that point. But the pressure during this infinite acting time really stays constant, can, can relatively constant throughout. Um, obviously, if you start messing with the choke, well, your, uh, your interpretation is going to uh, mess up here. But those are the key concepts. So let's get into it. And so some theory behind it. So on a typical rate time plot or rate cum plot, you're going to have a transient region, which is infinite acting flow. That's another term for it. If you've you've probably seen it in textbooks, transient is the same as infinite acting. And then you're gonna have boundary dominated flow. 
and there's going to be some point at which the reservoir flips and changes from infinite acting to boundary dominated but you cannot there is no way to determine this point from typical decline curves like rate cum and rate time and so this kind of shows you a visual of infinite acting and what we're assuming so this shows basically reservoir pressure on this y-axis here and this is the upper limit this is initial pressure and then you have the reservoir pressure at discrete distances from the, the well bore this is the well bore and so in infinite acting time we're assuming that the flowing pressure is constant with time so at the beginning of time this pressure is going to have this profile and it's going to extend out until it hits a boundary and so at this time we're assuming constant bottom hole pressure just remember that that's that's a huge assumption in engineering assumptions are huge we're not always exactly right but we can assume things to approximate things to get close and that's what we're doing in this case infinite acting we're assuming a constant bottom hole pressure and then after this pressure profile reaches the boundary well then you have boundary dominated flow and so you can see here the reservoir pressure at the external boundary is going to decline with time and so you start your pressure starts to decline and you're gonna have just less production and and this is the region that we approximate with ARPS equations which is stuff we've covered in previous videos so we should be familiar with that and so you can see here as the reservoir pressure declines you have a tendency to for the well flowing pressure to decline also um, you have less energy pushing things to surface and so um, you're gonna see a, a pressure decline unless you put back pressure on the formation you close this choke this arise but in this case um, just realize that in boundary dominated flow we do not have constant bottom hole pressure here well flowing pressure and so this is for radio flow condition that's we're talking radio flow and and um, that's the key assumption too so we have two flow regimes present infinite acting and boundary dominated flow those are the two, two two key flow regimes we're talking about and we're talking about infinite acting radio flow which means that we're assuming our well is draining a cylindrical area and so now we've kind of seen that rate time can't give us what we want but we can get what we want with a reciprocal rate versus time plot and here's how you can do it so you can approximate the infinite acting region here with a straight line assuming a constant bottom hole pressure with this equation okay this is basically you can see you probably won't find this in textbooks but it comes from fundamental equations the diffuse the diffusivity equation so we're going to talk about this in then part two but just realize in this video we're going to associate the infinite acting region with a straight line and the reference for this you can see this equation or an I a similar equation in well test analysis by I can't pronounce his name I don't want to say it because I'm not gonna mess it up but here it is Earl offer hope that was right man but this guy yes this is where this equation can be found or an identical equation to it and so we'll approximate this infinite acting region which should be a straight line through the data points and then beyond that we're approximating so this is the end of of the infinite acting region this line that that hits this data and then beyond this point we approximate this decline with ARPS equations shown here which is stuff we've seen previously this is just ARPS equations right here the two for harmonic and hyperbolic decline and there's a trick to this because when you flip from different flow regimes you actually can't get the the initial decline here unless you approximate it with this equation right here so the decline nominal decline or the instantaneous decline at on the, along this curve can be approximated with this equation it's just the slope over the rate and so we're going to approximate the end of 
this infinite acting flow or the beginning of boundary dominated flow with this equation and how we do that or how you can do that is with numerical methods I'm going to approximate this with a central finite divided difference and so this kind of gives you the framework of what the code I'm going to write is going to include so that you can go change it up if you want to and so just realize that the infinite acting radio flow regime is fit with a straight line and so here it is yes um, the infinite acting flow regime goes up to this point and then you have boundary dominated regime afterwards this showed up later than I wanted to but pause the video you, and you'll get the idea and uh, there's the infinite end of infinite acting radio flow right there with that triangle and so I'm not going to go into detail on all the steps here but here's the steps we're going to do to do a reciprocal rate radio flow interpretation and you can pause the video and read them and uh, I will show you how to do this in Excel but just realize that steps four through six is the same stuff we've done with rate time decline and the key point here at step four is because it switches to boundary dominated flow you have to start your producing time at zero and then uh, approximate that nominal decline with the equation on the previous slide so you have to restart once you enter boundary dominated flow you gotta restart your production time just realize that this is like a uh, if you've done bending moment diagrams for my mechies out there you know you have um, equations that that change form so uh, this is kinda identical to that um, just just uh, if, if you've ever done any of that this is very similar to that process is you have e different equations you have dis uh, continuities in your um, equations and that's what we're doing here with infinite acting and boundary dominated and so the pros and cons of, of uh, reciprocal rate decline for radio flow is that it's a little more tedious than your rate time and rate cumulative decline and also it's only valid for radio flow that's what these equations were derived from for radio flow constant bomb hole pressure producing well if you don't have that well you, you it's not it's not wise to apply this approach but the pros are this method acknowledges infinite acting and boundary dominated flow regimes unlike you know rate time and rate cum decline and also you can do reservoir characterization and that'll be covered in part two because it's good, this is going to be a little bit longer than the previous videos and so guys this is what excites me the most is you can get these from a decline curve interpretation and you don't have to waste money unless you want of course if you shut in a well you'll probably get and do like pressure transient test you'll probably get more accurate uh, results but this is a great approximation to um, wells that are uh, you don't want to shut in and so essentially uh, I've kind of described theory now let's get started